Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another edition of Bring Back the Love Conversations, a conversation about love, romance, and R&B. I am your host for this evening, AJ Throwback, and we are in our third episode about love languages, and I'm so excited to have on a sister of mine. Like When I tell y'all she is such an awesome, awesome, awesome sister, man, like just incredible, dope artist, an author. You know what I'm saying? She got a book out. Y'all, speak up. Silence is deadly on Amazon right now. When I tell you, you know, saying she is just so talented and then she's just so down to earth. Awesome. Just been such a huge support of everything I've been doing. I like to welcome y'all. Pretty baby. Jackson, I appreciate you for coming on tonight, my sister. Thank you. Thank you. You're wonderful. I like that. It's like, oh, accolade, accolade. But yes, I really and I appreciate it. <laughs> absolutely said, absolutely you give the word love you know of course it already has its meaning but you bring it to life you know what i mean and make it more you know relevant or uh, should i say it, you know it resonate with me and i'm like because brother as you mentioned you know i have done now i've been around but and, and you know i'm more of a behind the scenes type of person and i look yeah. and i say I'm like, oh yeah so that's why i don't have no problem with you know shouting out or reaching out or speaking out coming or whatever it's like you can you have that what am i trying to say that uh i want to say magnet but you get what i'm saying it, anyway yeah. oh exuberance whatever it makes a person want to reach out and say Go, brother. Yes, yes, yeah. You know, so yeah, appreciate I that. appreciate yeah. everything you do as well because you influence me too. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. And it's been my pleasure to support you as well. You know what I'm saying? Because I mean, you. like that you you give the energy that you get back. You know what I'm saying? I, I'm yeah. a firm believer in that. Amen. And so it's very easy for me to give you positive energy because from day one, you've been positive with me. And of course, mm -hmm. I got to shout out our sister fire of air it out radio because um, she's yeah. the reason why you know what i'm saying we've connected and, and exactly. honestly the reason why I've, you and i've connected so many other people that i've connected with over the right. past two years you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. and so i just i just appreciate definitely okay. always got to give her her flowers and everything yeah absolutely absolutely yes yes yeah. yes you know how they so, say the um uh... oh go ahead Oh, no, no. Go right ahead. Go right ahead. Oh, no, I'm just going to hurry up and plug you. But you know how they say the gatekeeper or the headquarters or whatever. So, yeah, she's right. an entity that connects. You know what I mean? But, yeah, shout out Fire. Fire Radio. At, yeah. Fire Absolutely. Chick. I'm saying it wrong. Fire Chick. That's right. Fire Chick. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? Put respect on my name. Get it right. <laughs> <laughs> People need to put more respect on Fire's name for real. You know, yes, for yes, sure. Yes. Yeah. So, um. So this, of course, this is a conversation uh, like how I like to start off with a lot of my guests that uh, come on this platform. First and foremost, mm -hmm. thank you for coming on the platform and agreeing thank to do you this. For having being me. one of the first to jumping up for this particular okay. topic uh, series or whatever. It's kind of like a okay. mini series. But okay. I always like to start off with the music um, because I think that that just is a lot of times like the foundation for our perspectives on love you know what i'm saying it might not necessarily be it our, our our the way that we look at love often evolves as we get older but a lot of times when we're younger and we have that that great music that just kind of sort of serves as that platform for how we look at the world especially right. as black folk because our, our music is just different you know what i'm saying yeah. that's that's one of the biggest yeah. reasons why i wanted to focus on r&b because sometimes r&b is the genre that especially in this era when hip hop is one of the most celebrated and listened to genres yeah. in the world, not just in the United States, the world, six most world. listened to genre in the world, the most listened to genre in the United States. Yeah. I think okay. sometimes R and B just kind of sort of gets left in the dust yeah. as like kind of like the the black sheep, so to say. And so, <laughs> one of the biggest reasons, like why I wanted to do this series, is just to really just shine a light on just how much R and B even influences a genre like hip hop, you know? Yeah. And so for you, um, mm -hmm. when was that moment that you really fell in love with like R and B music or like, what were your first memories connected to falling in love with R and B music? Oh my God. Mm. Well, definitely. I can say back in the late eighties. Um, I'm not sure when, but back in the late eighties, my, my, um, 
uncle, he was a, a DJ, which I'm jumping a little bit. I'll just right quick because I heard him playing a lot of like slow cuts, as we say, you know, slow jams or whatever, mm. which we know ties into RB and all that stuff. But anyway, I remember hearing that a lot, and it like certain songs just had me more attached to you know uh the music and whatever and it's like even as a child i can feel it so it's like you know what going back i'm gonna say like like we say like music is universal and it's all over the world but it is you know definitely like i spoke earlier like that connector you know what i mean so it's like mm -hmm. if a person can't relate to poetry or can't relate to this that or whatever they can definitely relate to music and it's like even as a child I don't know nothing about love per se, you know, I don't know this and that, but it's like that music will speak to you and you find yourself in love. So it's like, it's something about that song. It's something about that music. It's something about that. It keeps drawing you back. So you either constantly mm -hmm. playing it or you yep. listen to it on the radio or you're excited when it comes on the radio or whatever. Oh my God. So I got some stories for you about that one, but yeah. So I yeah. say about maybe the late eighties when I like not knowing what R and B is, you know, actually, you know, obviously, but being able to feel that because I can't say relate to because I was a child, but uh, mm -hmm. I can think back even as young as that age, eight, nine years old, it was something that had me drawn to the radio light. So, yeah, yeah, like late yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. And that's and that's around the same time for me that like okay. I really fell in love with R&B as well, like like okay. that particular era and being around that age range as well. Cause like, okay. I mean, I won't get too deep into it, but just kind of sort of thinking about like when my mom first got cable, when we, okay. when we moved into our um, spot that we lived in in Southeast DC. And okay. like one of the things that it was between for me as a kid, it was between Disney channel and mm -hmm. it was between BET. Like it was basically those two. Okay. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like if it wasn't the Disney Channel, the chat, the TV was always on BET, and so <laughs> like, like really kind of sort of like seeing a lot of that R&B, like seeing the videos, because it's one thing like when you have the radio, but then it's mm -hmm. have the video aspect to see a lot of the artists that like are singing these songs that you love so much. I just felt mm -hmm. like it put like a different kind of spin on it especially at that time when music videos were really becoming a thing in the 80s because i mean you think about the start of you know bt in 1980 then you think about mm -hmm. mtv i want to say 81 so like mm -hmm. and then vh1 like all of these different stations that are like yeah. playing music videos but like our, uh bt being the one focusing more on our music as black yeah. folk you know like yeah. just having those images i think it just kind of sort of shaped shape me differently and and that leads actually into a segue in terms of how you received music back then because um you're originally from is it chicago chicago yes right so and, yeah shot sound that's right so like <laughs> i'm pretty sure that like y'all had different radio personalities different stations that y'all tuned into to listen right. to certain music um you might have been might have been watching BET at the time who knows but like mm -hmm. what were some of the ways that you received music differently then that may have shaped the way that you appreciate music um versus say like how it is today okay okay um well before I get on it and, and help me because if I you know go off or whatever it didn't bring me back but first of all I want to uh say this because I don't hear it like mentioned too often we got to give a shout out to Donnie Simpson, um, speaking of BET, you know, back Absolutely. in the day when it first originated. And it's like, oh, my God, that's another way that uh, I can relate or remember or recall receiving that input of that love. I forgot the name of her show. Was it Love Soul or something? But it had a, it had to do with love. You know what I mean? So oh, you talking about with... Uh with Donnie Simpson's show Donnie Simpson, that yeah. he had on BT. So he had uh Video Soul. Video Soul. Video Soul. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. When I tell you, I was front and center to watch Video Soul every night that it was on. I was, I mean, I was right there. And then when they did the top 20 countdown every Friday. Oh my that was, God. Oh yeah. My God. <laughs> it was a wrap. Every Friday yes. I was in front of the TV. Yeah. <laughs> and like I say, yeah. it's funny, AJ, because like I say, I was a child. Well, yeah. let me say, around about that time, I was more like in my early teens. 
Okay. But even so, then you know, from I was a young child, and it's like it, it just grew me into it. So it's like you know how you can <laughs> let's say you you taste a certain cereal for the first time, and then you fall in love with it. Mm-hmm. Like you can't stop mm-hmm. eating those. Well, it was, yeah. that's what it is. It's like okay, um, even though we know this, or I put it like this, we don't really understand what's going on. But yes, if you think back, the genre and gender, everything it was like changing, but it still had yeah. that effect. It's like it's drawing you here. It's like it's capturing you. It's bringing you in. And like okay, so I could not stop. So yes, the video soul. Uh, yes. And then, like you mentioned, of course, it started changing. You know, VH1 all the stuff. Now they all still had the same relatableness, but it's still you know it was different a little bit you know so it gradually changed like with the john how it is today everything changed mm-hmm. like with time but it still had the same um essence or whatever was like that music the music yeah. like i said if you can't relate to anything else you can definitely relate to music so Absolutely. um mm-hmm. but to um answer um you know actually i need the question again <laughs> yeah, I mean, well, you answer you actually answer part of the question, like even bringing up video soul, because like and, and I'm glad that you said that, because I think a lot of people who grew up in that time, especially when BET was still like in its first 10, 15 years, yeah. um, I think a lot of us got so much of the music from watching video soul. You know, what yeah. I mean? so that that actually answers part of the question. The okay. other part of the question is, you know, like, I mean, you mentioned listening to the radio um, mm-hmm. and then I'm sure you pretty I'm I'm pretty sure like um, you heard music around the house. So it's like mm-hmm. be, you being from Chicago, because like from me being from D.C., you know, we had a different kind of energy when it came to how we received music, because BT was actually headquartered here for mm-hmm. like a good amount of the time, like during his first, I want to say like their main headquarters was here, like up until maybe even 2017, but they did, oh. they started doing a lot of stuff in New York after a while. Yeah. Um, okay. But like when they first really started out, they decided their headquarter here. So we had BET. Then we okay. had, um, then Donnie Simpson was also on the radio stations okay. here in DC as well. But then we also, you mentioned slow jams. We had uh, WHUR and the original Quiet Storm. And so, <laughs> like, I mean, that's when you think about the Quiet Storm format, the Slow Jam format, the Slow Jam format also started yeah. here because okay. you had Kevin Slow Jam and James who mm. popularized the term. And, mm-hmm. you know, he started at WKYS, much like Donnie Simpson was at WKYS in DC, okay. Melvin Lindsay being at WHUR. And when you talk about three people who really revolutionized, radio you okay. can't you can't you can't not talk about donnie simpson yeah you can't not talk about melvin Lindsay. you can't not talk about kevin slow jam and james because in each of their different ways they really revolutionized radio especially black radio in the 80s and the 90s so okay. you being in chicago mm-hmm. um you know i've i've read different things I, can't, I couldn't tell you certain people's names or whatever but i've read a lot of things where like right. chicago was also very influential Oh, in yeah. really shaping R and B music at right. different and different eras, you know, what I'm saying <laughs> so. Like, what was your experience like listening to um, radio at that particular time, and how that really shaped how you received music? Okay, okay. Um, well, yeah. Again, um, it you know, uh, it, it just had me drawn in. But anyway, a couple of the uh, radios. Well, our top two radios that radio stations rather that played r&b and slow jams or however it might be the same but anyway it was v103 and they're well known mm-hmm. for their um slow jams r&b you know uh, old school radio um but our other number one would be wgci you know shout mm-hmm. out her Man, oh my god He's the king of uh, step. I mean, every Sunday I would have to listen to my step music, and, and that's another way to relate to love because what yeah. our uh, what's his name R Kelly step in the name of love, you know. Yeah. So yeah. he did Sundays, and it was all about mostly about you know um, stepping or whatever, which you know that that's which is another um, area of love for our people, you know. Mm-hmm. But um, but yeah, so those top two, and then of course we had other ones or whatever, but those were the two most relevant. Like I said, V103 was more so about the slow jams, the R&B, Dusties or whatever. WGCI, we do with hip hop, R&B. We, it's like really various, you know what I mean? It does everything. Yeah. But yeah, so um, 
And actually, when I fell in love with radio itself, it was me listening to WGCI. Mm -hmm. And um, you know how like the uh, rotation with the radios or whatever, they have played the same, of course, whatever is popping and trending or whatever at the time. So um, these are particular songs, uh, I forget, I think it was Tracy Chapman. And uh, what was her song? Uh, uh, is it Fast Car? Is she I one? think... Her. You you might you might be right about that, like because I'm okay. I'm somewhat familiar with Tracy Chapman. Like I mm -hmm. I I know the one song, uh, "Give Me One Reason." I know that one. Um, okay. But I know, she, but I know she probably has some other ones that I wouldn't be able to tell you by name. But if I heard them, I I'd, I'd okay. recognize them. Yeah. But Tracy yeah. Chapman, and and it's interesting that you mentioned Tracy Chapman because she was one of them one of those types of artists that like I felt like she was like that alternative. R&B mm -hmm. before you really had a term alternative R&B, you know, like she, <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know, so that's, okay. that's, that's, that's an interest. That's an interesting pull right there. And like, she, mm -hmm. and like, and, and it's funny that we kind of sort of talked about BT earlier because that was the first place that I even heard her music. Like I didn't really hear her music prevalent, like on a lot of the stations here, but right. like I found out about the Tracy Chapman's, uh, the Terrence Trent Darby's who are kind of sort of a little bit different, yes, yes. but like, but they still kind of sort of, they had soul. They still were R and B. They just sound a little bit different. And I felt like yes. they were kind of the setups for say like an artist, like a Dion Ferris from Arrested Development. Um, mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like when, mm -hmm. when she came out, I feel like you couldn't have Dion Ferris without Tracy Chapman. You know yes. what I mean? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yes. You know, and, um, Right quick, I just said this, and that's funny that you yeah. say, not funny to say that, but good. Thank you for saying it because it's a lot of artists that's today, and I'm not trying to throw no shade or nothing, but it is what it is. They don't want to give people their recognition or their flowers per se or whatever. It's like if we didn't have this, we wouldn't have this. And there's that's a right. lot of people, you know what I mean, along the way, not just today, but some people just don't want to look back and give that and pay homage and say, well, yeah, you paved the way. So yes, because, you know, we got to think, what were we listening to way before we got on stage? Here it is. That's right. I'm like XYZ age or whatever. But then what was I listening to former? What was I, is something had to inspire me back then to get in me and influence me and want me to come forward and do this thing now. So it's like, by all means, pay homage. And even if you don't do it, what is a verbally or publicly or whatever but you gotta realize so if somebody bring that like a question or whatever to your attention whatever then just 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 be real about it we oh you know and that's again i don't want to be rambling but again that goes back to the foundation of love it's like mm -hmm. like you say love others you receive you get the love back you you get what you put out you know what i mean yeah. don't be so hard up on well now I, I i made myself i did myself it's Humble yourself. You got that love that I love listening to Dion Ward. I love listening to Anita Baker. I love to mm -hmm. listen to, you know, all these things or whatever. That did pave me. They what well, they paved the way to, like yeah. I said, getting here. So if it hadn't been for them, it's like, where would music be today? You That's know? right. Like, Absolutely. You know, a lot of people, okay. Um, oh, no, I'm just going to say wholeheartedly agree. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, okay. No, I was just going to say, like, okay, <laughs> I know you noticed this, like, a lot of the artists today are remixing what was made back then, you yep. know what I mean? So yep. it's like, okay, so when you have people that don't want to give them their props or whatever, whatever, it's like, okay, but, oh, there's no shade, <laughs> but no, mm -hmm. um, I was going to say how even Nicki Minaj took, uh, uh, what's his name, Rick James, is it Super yep. Freak? Super yep. freak, mm -hmm. you know. So mm -hmm. she got that today, and now she has put her own twist on it. She got her own uh uh rendition or whatever, and she have whatever. Well, to, of course, it fits her. But guess what? That was created back in the day. That was created way back yep. then. So yep. you know what I noticed? Okay, like over the years we would hear music, and I remember listening to music with my grandmother, you know, uh, my mom, whoever, you know, what I'm saying. But mostly my grandma because she was a music hit. Okay. Um, yeah. she, um, I remember, and then some of the music, it may sound like it's a little more up-tempo, just a little mm -hmm. bit. But then, like, yeah. if you hear it, like, uh, uh, 
I won't even say, I don't know if it's a remake of what, but anyway, they plan on it. For instance, Temptations, okay? Yeah. Now, mm -hmm. let's just say, my girl, my girl, talk about my girl. But then if it's playing mm -hmm. on the music, it's a little more slowed down. You'd be like, wait a minute, that don't, is that the way that it go for real? I don't know. <laughs> the music actually sound different um, when it's coming through the airways than it do live or in a movie oh, or yeah, whatever. Yeah. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? So, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's a good point. That's that's, that's yeah. definitely a good point because I think like when it comes through the airways and then when it's recorded down and all of that, it's always going to be different because you're really you're really taking away frequencies mm -hmm. to a certain oh. to a certain degree because it's mm -hmm. like when you're in person and you're experiencing it live, it's like yeah. you're getting you're getting it as it's intended nah. to be. Yeah. versus like you know you in the studio and it's like of course the manipulations with the sounds like mixing mastering like having mm -hmm. it sound a certain way so it can be presentable or competitive um yeah. on radio or compared to everybody else's music you it's something that always ends up getting lost you know what mm -hmm. i'm saying so I, I definitely i definitely understand where you're coming from with that you know what I mean? okay. okay yeah so you mentioned you mentioned a few artists. You mentioned Dionne Warwick. You mentioned uh, Anita Baker. You mentioned The mm -hmm. Temptations. Um, mm -hmm. Who are some of the like? And it could be like from the particular era that you fell in love with R and B, or it could be before, or all of the above. But like, who are some of the artists that really resonated with you um, mm -hmm. coming up? Okay. Um, mm, we're not really, you know, speaking of love. Why we talking about love? You know. Um, of course, I, 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 like you mentioned earlier, like, you know, um, your language, your love or whatever is, is uh, what word did you use? I guess it, it, it evolves, you know, and it does. It grows. Mm -hmm. It's different because I can think back and realize like around my time in like, like I said, okay, eight, late in the 80s, so 89, uh, I was mm -hmm. coming out of uh, eighth grade. And uh, it was, what what song was playing that summer? It was hot that summer. It was for... Let me see. Oh my God, it was a bunch. It was R. Kelly, uh, uh, Bump and Grind. It was a uh, guy, um, uh, what is it? Goodbye Love. Oh yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Make it last forever. Um, mm -hmm. It was just like, it was just something who, uh, I'm sorry, I was looking at my notes. But <laughs> <That's all good. laughs> it was just a lot of people, I'm not probably not supposed to say that. But anyway, it was a lot of people, whatever. But mainly, it's like I get emotionally tied into um, Goodbye Love because, you know, mm -hmm. it's like um, even before I would see the video, which I don't even remember what the video was. But anyway, you can imagine, and I hear it on the radio, and I can picture a man talking to his woman his lady whatever please don't go you know i love you so to me that was like sentimental and it's like and it actually taught me to be a better lover you know how can i hold on to my love so i'm gonna be a you know uh more respectful more loyal this and that or whatever so um Goodbye Love was one of the um songs that stood out for me that had me like, oh, I'm a you get what I'm saying? Um yeah, yeah, that was a good one. I love and like I say, make it last forever. So those two mm -hmm. songs, especially from back in that time, made me just want to be a better person when it comes to romantic love, when it comes to yeah. like trying to hold a relationship together, like well, what what is it to do? You done all this, and we done went out for a uh, dinner. We done went out for this, and we did the flower thing. So what can I do next? So it had me looking to the next thing, like what else can I make this a good relationship? Make you know what I mean? Make it work. Yeah. Make it last forever, like I said. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Those are those are two really specifically those two are really good ones, and like specifically that time. Like I know mm. for me, like I was a huge guy fan. In fact, my mm. dad he bought. Me and my brother, he bought us like two cassette tapes. I never forget. Like he bought my brother the Don't Be Cruel album by Bobby Brown, okay. and he bought me Guy's debut album. And mm -hmm. so, I mean, we would listen to each other's tapes. It didn't really matter who he bought the tapes for. We would we would listen yeah. to each other's okay. tapes to death. You know what I'm saying? Okay. And that's and that's and that's another thing. Like how we received music at that time. Like tapes mm -hmm. were huge. You know, mm -hmm. like I had so many tapes. I still have a lot of those tapes to this day. You know, yes. but specifically Guy resonated with me like when I first heard Groove Me and then I had to tape and then, mm -hmm. you know, what I'm saying like you hear songs like, you know, Teddy's Jam. I like Goodbye Love. 
um, piece Damn. of my love. Like, I mean, I mean, it was just so many bangers on that one tape. It wasn't even funny. Round and round. Uh, yeah. Like that joint. Like, it, I mean, it was so, so many bangers. And, and it's interesting that you mentioned both um, Goodbye Love and Make It Last Forever because both of those are connected to Teddy Riley, who produced mm-hmm. both tracks. And yeah. that was like right around that time that like, and you mentioned 89, that's right around that time, like New Jack Swing became a thing. Like, I mean, or the yeah. term itself became a thing because I mean, he was setting it up with the stuff he was doing with Key Sweat, with the stuff he was doing with Guy, with the, I mean, even like him doing uh, It Takes Two with Rob Bass. Like he was a part of oh. producing that. Oh, he was a part man. of producing uh, Heavy D when Heavy D first started, um, Big Daddy Kane. Like, I mean, he he had his, imp- his handprints Yes. In so yeah. many different things, just in those first couple of years of his production career, really starting out, and uh-huh. like it really started shaping the sound of R and B at that time. You know, like that's some of my fa- that's one of my favorite eras of R and B is New Jack Swing. But he was able to even take that energy and put it in the ballads, like yeah. um, "Goodbye Love," like "Make It Last Forever." You know, yeah. what I'm saying so, and 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 your points about like the type of love they really just kind of sort of put out there. Like it, it was a range. It wasn't just a sappy love or the happy love. It was like, look, we go through stuff as well. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And like we go through these challenges. So mm-hmm. I, I think having those different layers of representation at that mm-hmm. time was so important for how we, how we viewed love. We didn't just view it through rose colored glasses. We saw like yeah. the whole picture of what love yeah. could be. You know what I'm saying? What people go through, even not fully, like you said, understanding it all the way because we were still young. Our brains are still developing. You know, Mm -hmm. we ain't in no serious relationships at that point. (laughs) You know what I mean? But like, but it kind of sort of gives you a glimpse into what can be and what to expect to certain degrees. There you you go. There you go. Because, and that that brings me back to uh, say again, like how, like I said, well, like, when you hear the song, you know, okay, when it, the intro, we just say, um, uh, ch- ch- I forget what it says exactly, but anyway, it goes into that, baby, don't go. Woo, 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 woo. It start, you know, it's a small conversation, whatever. So it's like that little conversation that has you picturing. And I would always be in that energy because every time I hit, I'm picturing and I'm in, daydreaming, like, okay, then of course it made me, okay, what if put myself in that uh, uh, situation when I'm saying, feeling me, how would I handle it? So, the song itself is like speak uh basically a scenario is like mm-hmm. okay you're, you're picturing or whatever it's a man talking to his woman like okay you stay and let's talk and then it just goes on from there whatever so even mm-hmm. the song it just speak of uh it, it it speaks how am i trying to say it? visualize give you a visual yeah of a it's your story whatever. yeah mm-hmm. yeah so i'm yeah. like yeah okay but yeah that was i was in so in love but yeah those yeah. er- those er- eras, I say eras, those eras. Okay, back to yeah, you. that was no, it was a great era for R and B. You know what I'm saying? Like, like what's interesting is that, and I think I, I think I had put a comment on something you commented on. I was saying how '70s Philly soul is actually my favorite era of music, okay. but like '80s and '90s, that's the stuff I grew up on, and so it's always okay. going to like have a special place in my heart because mm-hmm. you still had those elements of storytelling you still had like the variations of subject matter you know that I, I'm, I'm gonna be honest i feel like in a lot of ways is missing from the r&b that's popular now it's like i feel yeah. like you really only have two extremes with music mm-hmm. now it's either a lot of sex or a lot of breakups and it's like, okay, well, what about some of the stuff in between? You know what I'm saying? What about, what about the good times? You know what mm. I'm saying? What about those mm. moments where, like, you first meet somebody? What mm-hmm. about talking about things like, you know, and even if you don't necessarily say it outright as a love language, like, okay. being able to not only speak somebody's love language, but mm. having somebody in your life who's able to speak yours, you know, mm-hmm. and so mm-hmm. kind of segueing into the topic itself of love languages. Um, I mean, you have the traditional ones out there. Uh, mm-hmm. You have words of affirmation. You have access service. You have yeah. physical touch, quality time and mm-hmm. receiving gifts. But, mm-hmm. you know, s- some people might not always necessarily subscribe to all of those 
um, right. conventional love languages. So mm-hmm. for you, mm-hmm. thinking about like when you were younger and first mm-hmm. kind of sort of realizing what love was versus where you are at this stage of your life, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. has your love language remained the same? Um, and if And if so, what is it? And if not, like if it's evolved, like what was it before versus what it is now at this particular stage of your life? Right. Okay. Okay. Um, you know, it definitely have uh, evolved, you know, and, and I'm not going to say it has changed from one point to another. It's just that it's just, you know, evolved and it's like, how you say, how you add to or whatever, you know what I mean? There's different, mm-hmm. there's always different levels to anything, especially, you know, growth, whatever. So it's like, I still have that and then I have more. And that, that is, you know, I used to previously, I used to be just, okay. I heard someone else mentioning like, okay, we are physical people. So of course yep. it start off with the physical um, attraction, you know what I mean? That uh, uh, chemistry, whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, so let start there, but see like now I'm in a, a, a era of, place in my life like it's not always the physical because sometimes you know how uh poison uh Bobby, who i say bobby brown but big bbd you can't yep. trust the big button to smile now if you <laughs> around, you can, i say to man you can't no i say if, if they got waves you better know how to misbehave because them waves <laughs> back in them days they had your woo, you know <laughs> 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 so uh, I used to be more to like looks and then mm-hmm. you know um like of course now of course it still matters to me how you look but that's not the most important so it's like it's yeah. about the energy so now I'm more like an energy person and okay. um you know um I've always been touchy feely and I talk with my hands anyway, but if I like you, then I may, you know, every time I talk to you, I'm, you know what I'm saying? You know, so I'm still touchy feeling, but yeah. I'm more now like, um, like I said, in, in, in energy, I like to express myself. I like words of encouragement. I like to share them. Um, I, I, of course I would like to receive them, but I like to share, um, empowerment, you know, encouragement, whatever. And I'm also more lately getting into more, um, my deed work that's the way i would call it but anyway my acts yeah. of service and stuff like that and that's how i express my love you know for the time being but yeah it didn't uh change in any way it's just evolution but like i said keep on thinking back to when i was younger i was more like a, a physical person you know got as you. Opposed to now. Mm-hmm. got you okay okay so i mean from what it sounds like you kind of like at this point you you have a mixture of a few love languages. And I think everybody to a certain degree yeah, has sure. like that mixture of all of the five conventional love languages that are out yes. there. But it's just like certain ones that kind of sort of rise to the top a little bit more than exactly. others. You know what I mean? Exactly. So like, like that's, that's interesting that like you evolved from mm-hmm. maybe a little bit more of the physical touch to still having that, but also like words of affirmation and, Mm-hmm. Um, acts of service being just as important, if if maybe not even a little bit more important at this particular mm-hmm. stage of your life. You know what I'm saying? And I mean, mm-hmm. it's ex- and it's expected, and it's not even a knock like physical touch because like physical touch doesn't even have to be like what a lot of people might think it is in terms right. of how you how you receive love and how you give love. You know what I mean? Right. So right. yeah, it, right. like. Like the the evolution is recognizing that you can express that particular love language in different ways that Mm -hmm. it's not the degraded version, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Or (laughs) kind of looking at it like from a music standpoint, you could be you could be an MP3 with your physical touch when you first start out and then you do you eventually evolve into a wave file. You know what I'm saying? Like the, yeah. pure, the pure, the purest form of the file, the, the, yes. the best form of the file that you can possibly right. get, you know, over exactly. time, like with, with experience and um, with just knowing what you need, what you want from whoever it is that you're, you know, you're dealing with. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, that's right. Yeah. That's that's true. And uh, to add to you, you say you want to use it as a, coming from a music perspective. So if we would compare that. So 
I got the uh, the MP the MP3 the evolution to the waves and fast with the stems with the yep. stems. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like I want to get more 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 I want to do more especially and I also want to make say this um so like okay that. yes I'm I'm still physical with it. so it's like even if I'm like sharing words of encouragement and having or whatever I sometimes tend to like rest my hand on their shoulder to assure them that, okay, I'm coming from a mm-hmm. good space. This isn't just, mm-hmm. you know, um, just smiles and yeah, have a good day. And then I turn my bed like this. Someone says, no, I want to assure you. So sometimes I still do the physical touch and I, you know, cause I want you to, you get what I'm saying? Have that comfort or whatever. Mm-hmm. So yeah, physical. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I like that. Like that, that mm-hmm. breakdown in terms of like, because that's, that's, a lot of times that's the things that people kind of sort of forget about when it comes to yeah. physical touch like that yeah. those moments where you need reassurance those moments where you need encouragement like you can express mm-hmm. that through how you touch somebody because it goes back yeah. to what you said in terms of energy your yeah. our energy is in the way that we touch somebody whether the energy yeah. is good or whether the energy is bad if it's mm-hmm. a reassuring energy if you touch that person and they mm-hmm. are connected with you they know exactly what you what you intend to do when you do what that you but be. right exactly but on the flip side of that if you mm-hmm. aren't coming from a good space that physical touch can have a negative impact mm-hmm. on somebody mm-hmm. where they'd be like mm. I don't, know. I don't know about you right about now. Yeah. <laughs> you know that one. I, I'm out with you. <laughs> right, right, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so that's why having the love attached to it, like that's why it's so important. Um, and and then to understand that it's like it's again, it's different layers and different levels to physical touch and how it can how it can be received and how you mm-hmm. receive it. You know what I'm saying? Right, right, right. Yeah. Exactly. Yes. Um, yeah. Just right quick. And that's only because we're sitting in But anyway, that made me think about what's her name? I think it was uh, Dion Warwick once again. And she used to say, reach out and touch someone. <laughs> so there. Mm. Yeah, yeah. There you go. There you go. You know, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> so I'm, I'm glad that you I'm glad that you said it. So there are different songs that I feel like can express those mm-hmm. different types of emotions, love languages, all of these different things that okay. there that are out there. So mm-hmm. kind of thinking about your love language or love languages, mm-hmm. can you think of a song that you feel like really captures how you express love? Um, or like not only how you express it, but how you receive it. Mm. Okay. Okay. Um well, of course, you know, going back to what I just said, Dion Worry, that's the reach out and touch. Um, any song that, how I receive it? Hmm. Anita Baker, of course, uh, mm-hmm. giving you the best that I got. And that, nice. I, I, you know, I actually, like, lately, I've been, I'm not going to say I've been all day, like, whatever. But I know a couple of my songs, I do use those exact bars, like giving you the best that I got. And then mm-hmm. when I think about it, like, OK, I wrote it initially because it do bring this out in this line and it do what it called rhyme or whatever. But then I think about it like that is true. That's a true statement to myself because mm-hmm. I am trying mm-hmm. to give not only the people, but myself the best that I got. I want to do my best. It has me wanting to. Um, not only impressed, but again, like I say, prove to myself that I can do this. So when you know that you've done the best that you could or whatever, it's of course the best that I got. And I, hey, it may not like you may not like it, you may not relate, whatever, but I'm giving you the best that I got. And I that's within relationship, that's within um um presentation, that's within anything. It's like I'm doing the best that I can, which did you know, which it's a little off topic, but it's not. But anyway, it takes me back to um, psychiatry, you know. Um, it's like, okay, you can't beat yourself up. You've done all that you can do. You've done the best that you can do. Taking me back to, you know, with raising my kids. Yes, I love you, but I don't know exactly how to express what I may need to express or what you expect me to or need for me to express. But it's like yeah. I'm doing the best that I could. So my love language 
between me and you as my child. I may just give you all types of gifts. I may, you know, mm. uh, shower you, like I say, with gifts and give you money to go shopping, whatever. But I may not be so endearing when it comes to me being strict or showing you that, okay, I'm trying to protect you and this and that or whatever. So, yeah, yeah just... I can't be myself up. So I give it the best that I got. And I've been taking on that. And that's one of the things that been helping me to grow, to evolve, yeah. to be, you know, to pre present myself how I do. Show up in the world the way that I do. So, yeah. Yeah. I, and, and what I like about what you just said, you said a couple things. And mm -hmm. that's the thing about this particular series. I think, yes, I brand it as a conversation about love, romance, and R&B. But okay. the first word in there is love. And yeah. love doesn't necessarily always have to be romantic love. It can be um, how, you how you love yourself, how you love God, yeah. how you love your family, um, yeah. how you love the person that you're in a relationship with, how you love your community, you love your culture, all of these different things. And so yeah. having a song like giving you the best that I got, and I love what you said in terms of how you say it to yourself, um, mm -hmm. because it kind of reminds me of the conversation that I had with my wife uh, in the series mm -hmm. premiere about how she's at the particular stage of her life where a lot of her favorite R&B songs that she came up with, she sings them to herself. And so okay. like thinking about like a giving yeah. you the best that I got and you saying how you sing it, you know, like that's something that you say to yourself when you take that saying and you say it to yourself um, yes. to affirm yourself, like thinking mm -hmm. about like your love languages. Um yeah specifically like words of affirmation acts of service like how do you feel like you flip that around or flip those types of love languages around to you so that you're able to give them out to somebody else or be able to receive it properly from somebody mm -hmm. else like how do you mm -hmm. get how do you how do you serve yourself how do you affirm yourself Okay. Um, again, uh, speaking self affirmations, um, doing uh, what I would call I call it mirror magic, and I'm gonna share that with you as well. <laughs> I um, like that. <laughs> but uh, yes, uh, so um, mirror magic, self affirmation, meditating, whatever it is, to where is that? Um, like I said, and like you know, um, you didn't say it exactly, but is it is basically. We have to, what did I say, self-reflect. We have to pour it back into ourselves instead of just pouring it out. Because again, you know, yes, I help out in my community. I do all I can, you know, whatever. And like I said, helping uh, my community move forward, et cetera. But it's like, I may get up on, what is the quote unquote, on the wrong side of the bed or whatever. Come on, what's the wrong side? Is there any such thing? But I get it. But anyway, <laughs> I may not feel so good for that day, but it's like, okay, but I got to let myself know, oh, well, you can do this. Uh, even if you can't, it's okay to take a break, but you got to make yourself know that it's okay. It's okay that you can't function like that totally. It's okay that you take a break. It's okay, like I hear all the time, it's okay. You have to have those, not particularly selfish moments, but it's selfish. Get what I say? Break it down. Mm -hmm. So you know how to yeah. say it three o'clock ish and this and that ish. So that means it's putting it in that arena. So it's myself and it's kind of issues, uh, you know. But it's like you gotta do that because that is gonna help build you up so that you can maybe one day or the next day or whatever, you go more full throttle with it. You do this and whatever. But you have to pull back into yourself what you pouring out, you know what I mean? Because right. let's say right. if a person particularly only can operate i put it like this i always have to use myself as an example i used to be to the point where it's like oh i need love i'm not gonna show you no love until you show me love you know i used to be like that but now mm -hmm. I'm, i i had to you know de detach myself from it because it's like no nah, i don't like that energy because guess what 
Everybody not going to rock with you. Everybody not going to love what you do. Everybody not going to support you. Everybody not going to believe in you. So if they don't do it, you have to do it for yourself. So that's, that's how right. I, you know, I, I love, you know, love on me and uh, affirm things for myself. I have to put into myself. So again, that comes with the meditating, that comes with self-affirmation, doing a mirror, you know, taking a break, don't answer the phone, getting more sleep, whatever it is. You know, I definitely mm-hmm. have to go back into myself. Yeah, I love that. I love that mm-hmm. because yeah, mm-hmm. it's just you have to before you can give that energy out, you have to make sure that your energy is right within because right. if you're broken or if there are pieces mm-hmm. where you feel like okay, I could do a little bit more in this area to affirm myself. I could do a little bit more in this area to serve myself without being self-serving, but yes. still like being able to give to myself what I would want to give to somebody else. You know what I'm saying? Being able to tell myself what I would want to be able to tell somebody else and be authentic in telling somebody or be authentic in serving somebody in that way. Cause that's, that's the key thing It's like, there has to be a level of, excuse me, authenticity there that people know exactly like who you are and they don't have to question what your intentions are. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And they don't have to question whether or not you do love yourself because it's clear. It's know? clear. It's clear. Yeah. It's clear. Um, that yeah. made me just think about like, okay, um, in this set all the time, it's like, okay, when you love yourself, you attract love. You attract That's some, right. you know, respect. You attract, you, you will just say, just like they say, you are what you eat. You are what you mm-hmm. put out. You are, right. if you show up in the world as such and such and such, and it's authentic, keyword, mm-hmm. then mm-hmm. that's what you're going to attract, you know? So, yeah. you know how they say, um, you can lie, lie to others, but you can't lie to yourself. If you out there on full <laughs> crap, you know, then it's like, mm-hmm. okay, the world is, they may not pick up, pick up on it like a face value or a first take or whatever, but mm-hmm going to show it's going to show so again yep. that bring back uh, energy is very important is very Absolutely. important oh well, yeah. yeah so yeah. you know yeah i Thank wholeheartedly you. agree with that wholeheartedly agree with that Thank you. so experiences with um either expressing your love languages mm-hmm. or like whether you giving it out or receiving it mm-hmm. what are some of the best experiences that Mm -hmm. you've had in terms of like whether it's i mean you can focus on each one of them you can focus on acts of service you can focus on words of affirmation you can focus on physical touch where you felt like you got exactly what you needed okay out of that that relationship that situation whatever it might have been um and you don't have to go in like unless you want to (laughs) because i i I, I always give people the option like hey you can go as deep as you want to go with it you know what i'm saying like nothing it's no holes barred on this show you know what i mean but Mm -hmm. you know like like certain instances where you like wow i really got what i needed at that and it could be a specific moment like i got what i needed Mm -hmm. at that specific moment from that person i got what i needed out out of that specific relationship with that person Mm -hmm. any you know anything along those lines Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Well, this one is, I'm quite sure, probably not expected, but I will say when I was a child, I'm going to close my eyes a while because this is how I visualize better. Mm -hmm. But anyway, I was a child and I was actually just speak to my mother about this like recently. But anyway, I can recall me being little and uh, my grandmother, uh, the property where we stayed or whatever, um, we have a big old, it was like maybe two, no, maybe my, maybe a, a, an acre of land. Okay. Yeah. And it was like gravel. The ground was gravel. And, mm. uh, I would always go run around no shoes on for whatever reason. We're not, that's for kids. So I don't have no shoes on, but anyway, my mom would come home from work. And I remember this one night she came home and it was kind of late. And uh, she carried me everywhere to, it. you know, she was holding me and she carried me from room to room or whatever. And that is the most I can get, like the most vivid or whatever. That's, how can I put that? The most part of my childhood that stands out and that I can definitely relate to love because I love, of course, I love my mom. My mama, she's, mm-hmm. I, 
I'm like maybe four, five, six years old, but I, I, she carried me around like uh, I'm not walking, like I'm an infant. Um, mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And speaking of uh, what you call it, that is the time when uh, what do you call it? the TV would go off air at a certain hour. Yep. Like, yep. You remember that? So, oh, yeah. and I remember this one particular night, and she, like I said, she just carrying me around, cradling me. I'm a baby. So we are so late. The TV went off air. So poof, no more TV. Let's turn the radio on. And she turned on the radio. And that was WGCI. And of course, <laughs> so now I got this love. I got this love. I got, you get what I'm saying? So I'm so in yeah. love. But yeah, that's one moment can definitely like stand out for me. And, you know, um, I mean, I have so many others, but yeah, that's mainly, mainly. And I just thought about it. You just took me back. Put me in a moment. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I and I love that moment because again, it's not that obvious like romantic type of love in yeah. terms of how your love language is being spoken. Like yes. how we relate to our parents, how we relate to, you know, our siblings if we have siblings, cousins, um yes. best friends, you know, people that we just come across, whatever it might be, like Our love language can be spoken by so many different people that, you know, we don't necessarily have to just limit it to um, romantic relationships. That's number one. And number two, connecting that to the conversation about R&B. I don't know why, but for whatever reason, instantly when you said, like you had mentioned your mother, you mentioned your grandmother and kind of sort of painted the picture. For whatever reason, I thought about Better Days by Diane Reeves. And that song, like like when I think about the time when it came out, I want to say it was like 86 or 87 when that song came out. And I remember as a kid, like hearing that song and Mm -hmm. it resonated with me because it was a different type of R&B that I was hearing on the radio at that time. You know, because I mean, a lot of a lot of the songs were about romantic love. And the, yeah, okay. But the thing that I appreciate about R&B soul music from especially like the 60s, the 70s, and even certain points of the 80s, is that okay. it ha- it was a wider range of topics that got expressed when it came yeah. to the type of love that you could experience. And yeah. so I, I mentioned Better Days because it just kind of sort of rem- like that picture you were painting just kind of reminded me like there are different types of love that can be expressed where your love language can be um, addressed or spoken through right. that particular, you know, through those particular songs or those particular moments and with a wide range of people that's in your life. You know, when it comes right. to like how you receive love, how you give love, anybody can speak it or do certain acts that you feel like that was a moment where I was the most loved. You know, so that's right. that's why that like like you describing it describing that moment it just really resonated with me, you know, oh, okay. because like that that's that's a huge amount of like what I want people that are watching this to kind of sort of get like when we have these types of conversations, love is I mean love is wide ranging. Like let's yeah. not limit our definitions or let's not limit our experiences to just a certain kind of love. Like love is you know it's kind of like the whisper saying is you know is love is where you find it. You know, right. In terms of where you are at this particular stage of your life, I mean, you've already said how your love language has evolved. So Mm -hmm. when it comes to, you know, whether it's new friends, whether it's new relationships, no matter what it is, whether it's the people that have been in your life, in Mm -hmm. terms of the way that your love language has evolved from Mm -hmm. when you were younger to now, what are your expectations when you are interacting with people and what you what you expect of them when it comes to not necessarily, I mean, it could be how they speak your love language, but just overall, like how you relate to people differently, knowing what your love languages are and not just how you receive the love, but how you also give it. Okay. Okay. Um, well, first thing first, um, I expect, you know, if I'm being genuine, I expect from them to be genuine as well. However, of course, we're not in a perfect world. So even if I don't get that, it's like as long as I can continue to be myself, as long as I don't let like 
maybe if they have like maybe some negative energy or something, whatever, don't let it rub up on me. I still have to continue to flow in my own and be who I am and express how I express and deliver how I deliver. So um, with that, just expect, you know, genuine you know, response. If not, then it is. But I still expect myself to stand up for who I am. You know what I mean? Still reflect mm -hmm. who I am, do who I am, you know? So, yeah, I don't really have too many expectations, you know, in this world, period, you know, but I would hope that it would be genuine interactions, et cetera, you know? And again, like I said, I just had to like, just keep on putting that out there, like I say, how I am, keeping a positive mindset, keeping a positive attitude, just being who I am and continue to just show up who I am, show up as I am, you know what I mean? And continue to yeah. love on people. Because, And I also have to take this into consideration, you know, um, I say this, you know, my mom, I don't come from a very nurturing background. I don't care. I don't come from hugs and kisses like you say you know with our love language we may speak love and okay we're here go get you some new tennis shoes every week and it's boom, boom i'm showing my child that i love them and uh i may she may have it oh you got so much freedom you can go up your friend's house you can do that or whatever that's the way i show my love um whatever mm -hmm. you know what i mean so um I, what i was gonna say i'll take it back to uh like say my mother or whatever uh, oh, and I'm losing my thought. I'm losing my thought. But it's like, again, you just show up. You know what I mean? Oh, I know what I was going to say. Everybody don't have that or know how to express love. They don't know how to, like I say, hug and do all stuff like that. But it's like, okay, you got to, uh, what I say, be considerate of that. You know, mm -hmm. say, like, you know how they say, well, you never know what a, a, another person is going through. You don't know. Yeah. So I take that and I say, well, this person may not know how to express love. They may not know how to show love. They may not know how to be mannerable and speak when they come to somebody's house. So I was like, okay, with that, I'll be a little bit lenient. Like, okay, oh, well, it is what it is. You may not uh, know how to be happy. You may not feel like speaking back. You don't speak to strangers. You know, that's one we always gotten as children. Right. Don't speak yeah. to strangers. So maybe they stuck in, I don't know, you know, but everybody don't have that. So it's like with that, I have what I call courtesy is like, all right, I, 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 I excuse you, but I, I'm still responsible for my part. I'm still yeah. responsible. Like if I come into a setting, and you got a group of people or whatever, they didn't sleep with me last night. So as me being who I am and raised up high around, I know that it's courteous, it's, it's respectful. Oh, how y'all doing? And even if they don't speak back, I still have to play my part. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it, and it comes right back to you have to, it has to start with you. Whatever mm -hmm. love that you give out and expect mm -hmm. to receive, it has yeah. to start with how you treat yourself. It's, it's the whole thing of um, you teach people how you have to teach people how to treat you by the way yeah. that you treat yourself. You know, right. kind of right. like like flipping that sand a little bit more. So yeah, yeah. I I, yeah. I love that. You know, and I think yeah. that that's a a really good gem for everybody that's watching really to take as they move into how they relate to people. And and I also like the fact that you said you don't have a whole lot of expectations. It's just really simple when it comes down to it. You know what I'm that's saying? Amazing. Like, like if, if we are interacting with one another, I expect a certain level of respect. And it's, and it's really just that simple. Yeah, yes, <laughs> you yes, yes, really. really. Yeah, but really. I'm going to give that respect to myself first so that mm -hmm. even if you don't give it to me, mm -hmm. I'm already mm -hmm. giving it to me. So mm -hmm. it's like you either you either with me or you're not. And it's good cool because I'm, I'm already I'm already be my cup is already going to be filled and flowing over with love, with respect, with encouragement, with all of the things that I need in order to really thrive in this world off of the off of the love that I need in order to really be somebody who's impactful, be somebody who is respectful, be somebody who is loving. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. And um, just right quick, I'm going to add this like. Yeah. Okay, going back to um, it's like okay, um, again, like I say, you know, if I'm showing up and I'm doing, I'm putting it out there, I'm putting it out there because I'm being who I genuinely am. This is what I want. Again, mm -hmm. all biblical, whatever. I'm gonna yep. Treat others how I want to be treated. Now, you, if you don't in turn show me that or whatever, I realize now, like 
and of course my latter years like okay well you can't what they call that deplete yourself so much you can't just pour out and pour out and pour out and pour out and then you don't get back you don't get back you don't get back because then eventually that's gonna like do something to you you know what i mean and it's like okay so then now at the end of the day you're angry you're drained it's like all i did was love them i love them i love them but they didn't show it back but see you don't have to do that pour a little i ain't gonna say pour a little but pull out whatever you want to pour out but you also have a right to draw back too so yep. if i'm going in the room and it's full of people just nothing but frown as soon as they see me but i'm still in my jolly spirit hey how everybody doing and nobody speak back or just one person speak back but i realize everybody has negative energy or whatever it's like okay well i don't have to come well you know girl i had a good day and woo 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 and you know i went to that charity event i don't have to do that because they didn't already show me they're not rocking with me so it's like okay right well i'll just keep it to myself because i would rather um i don't want to say seem selfish because i'm not selfish you know what i mean i've already extended hello but I'm not going to keep on and strike up a conversation. And I know that you don't really want to talk to me or whatever. And like I say, drain myself. And then I hurt myself. That's how we hurt ourselves a lot. And I did that a lot. You know, I was always mm -hmm. like pouring. And I was always loving on people. And I don't know if people would take it as genuine or not. I'm not sure. I don't know. But it's like I wouldn't get that back. So at the end of the day, yeah, I'm crying like, God, what am I doing wrong? And you know, yeah. real. But see, it's like, okay stop stop give what mm -hmm. what they say give and you shall receive or what's the other yep. one um you know i keep on saying that doing to others what you want done you know it's yeah. you, you continue to do certain things if you're getting it now no fool is not going to go out in the street and whatever and see a car come in and just stand there you get out the way you know what right. i mean so that's just listen you got to protect yourself at the end of the day and that's what you know, whatever kind of love. Of course, I'm a romantic person. I would love to have, but in the time being, I'm about like just loving on others, you know, whether that be an That's act right. of service, whether it be speaking encouragement or whatever, whatever. But yeah, we got to, you know what I mean, protect ourselves. That's right. That's right. Couldn't agree with you more. You know what I'm saying? That's, mm -hmm. that's great advice for everybody watching. I definitely appreciate you for uh, being on tonight and everything. And of okay. course, this is the time that i always give my guests the opportunity because like we started from the outset you are a hip-hop artist you are also an author so mm -hmm. you know i want you to be able to plug everything that you got going on let people know um how they can get your music how they can get your book um how they can connect with you on social media all of that good stuff so this is your time my sister okay well um first of all speaking of my book which is uh entitled speak up silence is deadly and i'll plug um a little bit right quick it's about bravery and uh activism and bravery to me is also love because it is where i had to love myself enough to be brave enough to speak up on certain things that took place in my life certain things that i experienced or whatever so i had to love myself enough to say though well you can do this once again going back to the, the best that you got you can do this so that is love also within you know within that as well but uh speak up silence is daily and it's available on amazon in a paperback format as well as hardcover um um currently um campaigning with the poor people's uh campaign abbreviation is ppc yeah. And uh, um, we do that, you know, which is actually all over the 50, you know, states. As a matter of fact, AJ, we're due to come out in um, to Washington, D.C. this coming June, July, June mm -hmm. or July. I'll get more details. But uh, I, I marched with the Poor People's Campaign, and I just feel good as, as just being an activist and being involved to express more, to love more, to show more, whatever. And that actually started with uh, Martin Luther King. So I'm doing that. Um, I'm working on a single, um, and I'm like, you know, I keep on having these where it's like, yo, you do an album, whatever. But see, I can't, I have not gotten to that single just yet. So I'm working on another single. Um, um, and that is entitled <laughs> Tired. Tired. T-I-Y-U-D. Tired. 
you know, uh, our people, you know, when we go into slang mode, we don't say it. What call it? Ebonics. We don't, you know, so it's not tired. I'm tired. I'm tired. Like, I'm tired of this. You get what I'm saying? But anyway, mm-hmm. I'm working on that single. Um, and I just have some other things. Whatever come my way, I'm still working in my community. Um, uh, I go um, a racial justice uh, forum that I'm involved in. Um, I'm just doing a lot of stuff. So um, with that being said, if anybody wants to uh, follow me, uh, do so uh, at uh, social media platforms. I'm on IG and, and I'm at, at Pretty Baby Jackson. And that's P R E T T Y B A B Y J A X S O N. Um, as well at Pretty Baby Jackson uh, 3901 on TikTok and at Pretty Baby Jackson, same spelling on YouTube. So you can follow me on, you know, pretty much any um, social media. I'm on Facebook at Tamara Yvonne. Um, so I just got a few things just going on. And to God be the glory, I, I, I plan to do more when that time permits. But y'all check me out. Speak up. Silence is daily. Love yourself enough to tell the truth. Love yourself enough to say that you can, to stand up and whatever it is, you know, of course, love yourself enough to give yourself time and, you know, to be able to open up because you always want to express the real. You want to be authentic with people, but give yourself that because guess what? You're worth it. You're worth it. Amen to all of that. That's, that's, that's awesome. And you are, some of that stuff I didn't even know that you were doing, like the Poor People's Campaign. I didn't know you were doing that. So like, please, yeah. when y'all come to D.C., let me know. You you know, I, know. I, I would I would I would love to pull up for that because like I've I've been kind of sort of following what they've been doing for okay. I would say the past maybe six to seven years. Um mm-hmm. I forget the gentleman in North Car- I think he's in North Carolina who's one of the main like um catalysts for the movement. Now I think he's a reverend there. Reverend um, Bob. Yes, 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 yes. Absolutely yeah. love what he's been doing with the Poor People's Campaign. So I would love to be able to come out to um come out when y'all come to DC. So definitely keep me posted. <laughs> I definitely will. I definitely will. As a matter of fact, um, we did a uh because we do oh, I gotta do it tonight. But anyway, we like I say, I do a lot of Zoom with them, and uh we were speaking yesterday about us uh, how we're gonna rally and get our you know buses to come down to these to DC. But anyway, um, when she mentioned that, I'm like, right. And I have been knowing about it for a couple of months now. And I'm like, hey, Jay Nim in DC. And I keep on telling right. Lori, I keep on telling Renus, I tell everybody, you know, I'm going to be down, I'm going to be down. So now I- I'm going to be down there. Yeah. <laughs> and, I yeah. Say, and I told the one woman, I told her, I said, I have a few people I want to reach out to. And actually, when we was talking to whatever, I pictured you guys, you all came up. AJ, I can see you right, by us. I can see, I just see all you guys. I'm like, yes, yeah. definitely I'm going to keep you posted. Definitely. We, well, we, we all appreciate that for sure. For sure. Okay. You know okay. what I'm saying? So I just want to, once again, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for a great conversation tonight, for your perspectives, for, you know, your stories and everything that like really connect with like your story of, like love and R and B and your love languages. You know, I just appreciate everything that you, that you just put out there tonight. And I know a lot of people who are watching this can definitely connect with it, relate to it. And, um, you know, it it'll really keep the conversations going about like what makes not only R and B music so great, but what makes love so great, you know, yes. like real love, you know? Yes. So I yes. definitely appreciate you for coming on tonight, my sister. Yes, indeed. I'm going to stay the same, the same. I, and I appreciate you having me. And it's like, you know, so I got it out. But yeah, the more, the more. I'm going to say with this one campaign, the, the the poor people's campaign. And that's what, you know, it's not only with being poor, but that's with everything because it makes sense. Uh, oh, my God. Let me find it. I want to say one step, but it's not one step. Move it, moving forward, not one step back. So we always about going forward, and that's with encouragement, that's with empowerment, whatever. We're always moving forward. That's with love, you know, whatever the love language is. It's always about moving forward, but we ain't going mm-hmm. backwards. So that's you. right. That's right. You look to the you look to the past as a reference, but not mm-hmm. solely as like how you go about things because things are right. always evolving. You know, right. Right. Yeah. Indeed, yeah. indeed. So I yes, appreciate indeed. it, brother AJ. 
Absolutely, absolutely. And we'll be, you know, you know, you know how we do. We'll be we be contacting each other soon enough. Yeah. So, you know yes. what I'm saying? Yes. Definitely uh look forward to talking to you next time. Okay, cool. Peace All out. Right now. Appreciate it. All right, peace. All right, babe. All right. Oh yeah, you gotta hit the uh the I think it's a remove button on uh remove if you, yeah I think you now leave, leave studio. studio yeah leave, leave studio. studio yeah there okay. it is <laughs> okay peace out all right peace <laughs> all right ladies and gentlemen once again that was pretty baby Jackson. For a great conversation about love languages tonight. I'm so grateful to her. So grateful to everybody who's been a part of this particular part of the series so far. Everybody who's going to be a part of the series um, to come. So, of course, uh, everything that I do is inspired and surrounding my latest project that will be coming out in June called Love on Rewind. My latest single that is out right now. Uh, actually got to pull up audio for it uh this is called fluent in my language um it is out right now on all digital streaming platforms but y'all know me i'm all about purchasing so um it is that camp is aj throwback dot bandcamp.com also my website b-a-m-m-l-l-c dot net forward slash music um it's available for purchase and streaming, but y'all know me. I'm all about uh, purchasing. But hey, I'm all about the stream too. And and uh, there's some things in the work in terms of Congress. They're trying to get more money for streaming. So uh, yeah, we about to potentially get more money from them streams. So I'm not going to discourage streaming. I still encourage the purchasing. But um I definitely encourage y'all to support not just me, but any independent artist. Um, make sure that you support by actually purchasing the music. It just means a lot more. We get the money directly in our pocket versus having to wait for certain times for the money to clear and all of this stuff that we have to often do as um, artists, period. It's not just independent artists. The majors got to worry about it, too. But, you know, the majors, they got all of these other things kind of helping them out. They're on the radio. They're constantly in the public eye so it's easier for them to get them streams but for us as independent artists it's a lot harder so everything that every bit of support always counts so fluent in my language currently out once again it's all available on all digital streaming platforms it's available at ajthrowback.bandcamp.com and is also available at my website which is bammllc.net forward slash music same website, B-A-M-M-L-L-C.net, where you can get you can get batch gear. You know what I'm saying? Y'all see me with this hat. Now, this hat is no longer available on the site because I had it on the site. Nobody was buying it. So I was like, look, I'm not going to keep stuff on the site that people ain't buying. You know what I mean? But hey, if you want me to put it back on the site, I know uh, my sis Pretty Baby was admiring the hat. So I appreciate that. Who knows? If enough demand for the hat comes back maybe i'll put it back but this hoodie right here independent artist with a major presence y'all seen me in this hoodie a couple of times before this is definitely on the website so if you see this or anything from my love on rewind collection you've been seeing the uh, advertisements go around on my batch 202 page and also uh my page aj throwback um definitely make sure that you visit bammllc.net forward slash shop batch once again that's b-a-m-m-l-l-c dot net forward slash shop batch um let me make sure i got the right thing um flowing oh no i have the wrong banner y'all gotta excuse me i got a couple banners in this thing <laughs> had the wrong banner going so that was the banner for uh my last single something new but hey if you don't have something new go get that as well if you don't have fluid in my language Go get that single as well. Both of those singles are out on all digital streaming platforms. Both of those are at ajthrowback.bandcamp.com. Both of those are at bammllc.net forward slash 
music. Um, if you're not already following me on social media, I am at a.j.throwback on Instagram, on TikTok, and on threads. Um, I'm also at AJ Throwback on Facebook and X, formerly known as Twitter. And I'm at AJ Throwback928 right here on YouTube. If you're not already subscribed to my YouTube, please make sure that you subscribe, like, comment, share. And when you subscribe, please make sure that you hit the bell notification so whenever I go live, post a new video, premiere a new video, you'll be among the first to know. You can also follow the Batch brand at Batch.202. Um, that is on Facebook and Instagram. On X, formerly known as Twitter, it is Batch underscore 202. So definitely, definitely appreciate everybody for tuning in for this particular conversation of bring back the love conversations. Once again, it's always about a love, a conversation about love, romance, and R&B. Uh, we will have another guest next Friday, same time, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 8 p.m. Central Standard Time, and 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. If anybody is in the mountain mountain region, we on at 7 p.m. in uh in your in your area. Uh, so once again, thanks everybody for tuning in tonight, and uh, we will see y'all next Friday. And as always, appreciate the love and support. And keep the love flowing, keep the love going and all of that good stuff. And I will see y'all next time. Peace, y'all.